Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of 10 for the Chairman. For those of you who haven't watched this before, this is where I take 10 questions from subscribers and answer them to the best of my ability. The subscribers are the subset of our community that contribute money every month to enable us to do a higher degree of community content and feedback. Uh, doing 10 for the Chairman here, around the verse. Uh, we do the Jump Point magazine, which is usually somewhere between 50 and 70 pages of really in-depth behind the scenes. Um, information on how we built spaceships or how we did certain things in the game as well as having fictional uh, components uh, s stories set in the universe of Star Citizen and uh, information on different star systems and it's a really great read so uh, you should check out um, Jump Point if you haven't done so uh, and uh, there's other uh, stuff that um, you know the money that uh, subscribers give us enable us to do but primarily uh, we're really thankful to them because it really allows us to have sort of a higher degree of community interaction than, than maybe we would normally have the time or, or, or the budget to do so thank you guys um, so um, just before I get to get into it we uh, had uh, kind of a little uh, letter here from Lord uh, uh, Cor Coriolis I don't probably not say it. Coriolis I think would be the way Lord Coriolis um, who actually sent us along this um, little bit of, uh, I guess, rocket, uh, what would we call it now? Uh, duh, 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 duh. Uh, well, I'll, I'll read the letter would be the best way, but um, it says, Space Launch Complex 6, SLC-6 uh, at Vandenberg Air Force Base was built to launch the Space Shuttle into high inclination orbits back in the days of yore when national policy was that all commercial DOD and intelligence satellites from the US would be launched on the shuttle. Uh, well, then Challenger happened and satellites went back to being launched on expendable boosters, aka rockets. Incidentally, the shuttle never actually launched from Vandenberg. SLC, SLC-6 was leased to United Launch Alliance, the conglomeration of Boeing and Lockheed Martin's launch divisions, to launch the Delta IV rocket, technically EELV, Evolved Expendable Launch Vehicle. We're all learning stuff today. Incidentally, since the Delta IV is a totally cryogenic booster, it burns liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen as its fuel and oxidizer. Also, I just want an excuse to mention that it's a cryogenic booster because it sounds awesome. It does definitely sound awesome. The products of combustion are heat, thrust, and water. This makes it a very clean burning rocket, at least until you strap solid rocket boosters onto a Delta IV M+, then things get messy. Anyway, when a Delta IV, or any other launch vehicle for that matter, launches, the exhaust plume is hot enough to actually, that it actually melts the concrete of the exhaust duct. Once it cools enough to resolify, it forms a shiny green substance which is caked onto the floor and the wall of the duct, which the range staff refer to as rocket glass. When my class climbed down into the exhaust duct, our guide in invited us to grab any chips of rocket glass we'd like, so I did. Below is a picture of a Delta IV heavy launch, which we'll insert into um, this uh, Temp of the Chairman, uh, where the fire is coming out the bottom left is the end of the exhaust duct, which I went down to get the glass chips, under less lethal conditions, obviously. And here is the uh, little bit of rocket glass. Uh, there you go. Um, anyway, so thank you very much, Lord uh, Coriolis. Uh, for that kind of pretty cool thing and learn something every day so very cool uh, all right so to the questions uh, the first one comes from the hound um, who obviously is taking a break from filming the game of thrones season five and is asking us when you speak of procedural generation for planet side will the map persist for everyone or will it last only for the time we are in the instance no so uh, uh, when we do procedural generation uh, for the planet and of course uh, you know we're gonna have different levels of this so we have very uh, designed and built environments uh, and then we'll have some that will be a combination using some procedural techniques and some design techniques and then potentially down the road we've been talking about maybe having some sort of planets you could land on that would have areas you could explore and that could be all procedural but that's not going to be sort of v1 of star citizen but it's definitely in the pipeline of stuff that we're we're looking towards and we'll be trying to do uh but yes that 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 whatever it is that map that building that area um, will be the same for all the players so the procedural uh, technique is sort of building and creating it but it's not uh, randomly generated for each different player it would be based on one seed one number uh, that would create a um, you know something that would be the same experience for every single player that would uh, visit it so uh, you know it's more procedural generation is more a technique to generate a lot of sort of content or areas to explore um, without having to do a huge amount of sort of manual work um, all right so uh, Eddie asks 
will we be able to manage hired NPCs? For example, can I tell them to take my constellation to a set planet, drop off some goods, and then come back with, without me on board? Or can I put them in a Hornet I own and set them to escort a ship I'm on? Um, so yes, you'll definitely be able to manage hired NPCs. Not quite sure about exactly the uh, level of fidelity in terms of micromanaging them, but uh, you know, you know, even back in the Wing Commander days, you had your wingman, you'd be like, attack my target, uh, you, know, um, uh, you know, form on my wing, um, you know, uh, retreat or whatever. So uh, you'll definitely have the ability to issue um, commands to your sort of NPC wingman, and you'll also be able to sort of do higher level goals like, okay, I'm hiring you, your mission is to protect my uh, freelancer ship from pirates, so you can hire a couple of mercenaries to fly on your wing to make sure you get from point A to point B. Um, and you could hire NPCs to say take a cargo from one place to another place uh, and other various stuff like that. And we're going to try and make it um, you know, as sophisticated as possible, but uh, uh, you know, at the very least uh, you're going to be able to hire them to sort of run missions for you, you'll be able to hire them to uh, protect you, uh, and you'll be able to give them some more specific sort of combat um, influenced um, commands. So you know, when you come under a target, like attack my target or all that kind of stuff. Um, all right. Next question comes from bdubs86, who asks, will organizations be able to establish some type of headquarters? If so, how do you envision this developing over time in the PU? Which is Persistent Universe, for all of you that don't know, but I doubt that won't be many of you. Uh, would it be an option for organizations to create space stations in non-UEE space, or would there be certain sections on planets possibly dedicated to this? Well, I'm not sure that an organization you necessarily be able to create space stations, uh, although in a longer term goal, it'd be kind of cool to have some sort of player generated um, construction and stuff. Uh, but definitely organizations will be able to um, have some real estate, have some uh, you know, kind of headquarter. We've already talked about um, having some sort of uh, persistent areas in space like an asteroid base or a, or a derelict space station that a group of players, an organization can take over and um, you know, sort of make their headquarters and of course other organizations may want to take it from them. Uh, and then of course down on the planets there can be sort of some safer areas where maybe you can sort of buy a, I don't know, a guild hall or something like that that you can have for your organization. And, and that would be elements of the persistent universe that I think would be kind of intriguing because you know, we want to have some goals where people can ultimately sort of buy some level of real estate or you know, own a, a factory or something like that. And that would all be stuff that you know, would be pretty good for organizations. Um, okay, next question comes from CDF Wolf who asks, will there be a ship training school so new players can learn tips on how to fly? This may show them aspects they may not have known about before. Well, so, okay, so the, the intention in the final game is that uh, Squadron 42 is sort of your training um, experience, and we've sort of designed it um, where it's got cool story and cool action, but there are definitely areas and elements in it where we sort of introduce you to different uh, ideas, uh, or different sort of maneuvers, or you know, management of your ship systems, uh, and doing various different game mechanics in uh, Squadron 42 where you get led through and then hopefully once you've gone through that and you get, you know, you go out into the uh, persistent universe, you'll, you'll have sort of have a pretty good background in it. Of course, there's people that may not want to bother with the story and they can go straight into the game. Arena Commander is obviously a place where you can go and practice by yourself against AI or you can practice against other people. And on uh, you know, our website, which is we sort of need to do more of, the plan is to have sort of some tutorial videos that would be sort of like, here's the basic controls, here's sort of you know, advanced space maneuvering one, here's advanced space maneuvering two, where you sort of start to show more sophisticated techniques, whether it's systems management, um, you know, using the various different flight modes and, and so on. Um, but yes, we definitely want to try and make the game uh, friendly to new people, especially if you don't know how to you know, play a space sim or a flight sim. Um, so we still got a ways to go on that because we're still very much in these sort of early stages of just even trying to iterate on some things like the flight mode and the targeting and stuff to make it as good as possible. And that's actually kind of one of the really cool things about having thing like Arena Commander out there so early and having so many of you play it and give us so much feedback is that I really believe with all this feedback and, uh, you know, constant iteration process, by the time it's all done, it's going to be uh, you know, quite good. So, you know, I'm right now we're working actually pretty, uh, you know, we're working on the, the targeting stuff, especially for joysticks and gamepad stuff. And um, I think um, with 
that patch, which will be 13.2, you'll actually, you guys will be quite happy because, um, you know, I've gone from not being able to hit anything with a gamepad to being pretty good. Um, and I'm not the best pilot here by a long way. <laughs> uh, okay, next question uh, comes from Drunken Fryer, who asks, some throttle controllers have multiple throttle inputs. Would it be possible to set each of those throttles to control an individual engine? That way, if I need to make a faster turn in my Starfarer, I could throttle down on the left engine and keep the right one at full blast. Yeah, I mean, that's actually something that, like, you know, looking at the HOTAS setups when you've got, you know, the sort of um, ability to have, uh, you know, dual engine throttles and stuff uh, that we've considered. I'm not 100% sure about doing it, although uh, the system should support it because each thruster applies thrust at the actual thruster itself. So you have two engines, that's actually two thrusters on the back applying thrust. Um, so, uh, you know, I would say that would be something that uh, we would consider just, um, you know, not making a promise just yet, but it is definitely something that wouldn't be too hard. So it's really just having the time to do it. Um, you know, John Pritchett would be the person that would probably uh, do that along with uh, Jens, who does most of our control stuff. Um, so no promise of any patch very soon, but it's definitely something that we would think about. Um, next question comes from Chairman Kaga, who asks, are we able to rent our spaceships to other players? If so, what happens if it gets destroyed while in their possession? Will the insurance still cover it even though I wasn't the pilot? You definitely will be able to uh, land or let uh, other players fly your ship. Like for instance, you can have someone to fly a ship for you. Like if you've got several ships, you can have people fly it or you can have your friends fly it. And yes, your insurance will cover your ship when someone else is flying it. Um, of course, it won't cover the extra bits, the upgrades or the items and stuff like that. So you may want to think about uh, that before giving it to a friend of yours that you don't think is a particularly good pilot. Um, uh, but uh, the insurance will still cover it if you're not the pilot. So hopefully um, that answers your question. As whether you can rent it, um, well, since you can sort of hire other people to fly ships and you can lend ships to other people, I'm assuming that you could probably, uh, well, I'm not assuming, I would kind of know that our mechanic would probably allow you to give the ship and they would give you a sort of payment for letting you use your ship. Um, so yes, and it will be insured. Okay, next question comes from Lexan, who asks, in the Wing Commander film, we saw the Tiger's Claw hangar bay had an environment or atmospheric shield, allowing the crew to work in normal conditions while fighters come and go through the field. Will there be any type of airlock field slash shield or energy-based barrier to perform the same task in Star Citizen on larger capital ships? Uh, so yes, the answer is absolutely yes. Um, on the bigger ships like the Bengal carrier, there would be a force field on the, uh, the, the flight deck so people can move around the stuff. And actually, that's one of the tasks in our graphics um, department. We've got um, you know, four graphics programmers on the project at the moment and having that sort of go through a shield and you know, kind of break it apart is actually one of the things we want to do for exactly that. Um, okay, next question comes from Felix who asks, my question has to do with uh, voice over IP chat and location-based sound effects. Will eavesdropping be possible? Will I be able to hear my mutinous crew's hushed voices echo through my hull? Or listen to big time traders discuss the details of huge mergers and trade deals? Yes, we definitely want to do VOIP chat and we definitely want to do location-based sound effects. So we've actually kind of looking at that. We're going to move to a new sound system, uh, basically from FMR to WYs that lets us do some more um, kind of sort of dynamic real-time uh, filtering on sounds, which will definitely help with that. We haven't decided fully on a VOIP solution, but the goal would be to sort of have a solution where, you know, as I'm walking around, if I'm talking over VOIP, in the game, if you're on the other side, you would sort of hear my voice coming from where my character was, and it would be, um, you know, processed in such a way that would be appropriate to what I was wearing if I got a if I've got like a, you know, a helmet on, it's different than if I don't have a helmet on and, and, and such. Um, so um, that is definitely uh, something we want to do. Uh, in terms of eavesdropping, uh, you know, I, I mean, with that mechanic, you would have a little bit if you had two, two, two of your crew that are your friends are talking about taking over your constellation, then I would assume that uh, if they were stupid enough to say it over VOIP in the ship as opposed to some other route, then you would probably in that setup be able to hear them. Um, I don't know about the big time traders and deals, uh, huge mergers and stuff, but we're definitely going to do stuff on the PU that would enable you to sort of listen in and basically be an info trader and find out and get information on like where a deal's going down or where there's, a, there's going to be a killing to made on a certain commodity because that'll be part of the gameplay. Um, so that won't necessarily be VOIP, but it would definitely be sort of more NPC eavesdropping listening kind of stuff. Um, all right, next question comes from Green Man who asks, 
In regards to mining, will we be able to refine raw materials ourselves in order to cut out a middleman, or will we have to bring them to some planet and pay for someone to refine them for us? Uh, so I would say in the mining stuff, you're going to raw the, you're going to refine the raw materials. At some point, we we probably would enable, uh, you know, players or an organization to also order to own. Uh, elements down the chain, so the refinery process, maybe there would be even a sort of kind of specialist refinery ship, or maybe you could own a refinery node that would be out in an asteroid field or down on the planet. Um, so if you own that sort of chain, then yeah, obviously you could mine it, refine it, and then sell it on as, as uh, you know, uh, you know a sort of, you know, refined uh, metal or whatever it would be. Um, so we definitely want to do that. So, you know, if people want to engage in sort of more the economic uh, gameplay aspect than they can without having to focus on the combat aspect. I mean, that's really one of the big things for Star Citizen is I really want to embrace multiple roles and also uh, kinds of things that encourage people to play cooperatively together. So yes, there's definitely going to be head-to-head -head and PvP stuff and you fighting against other um, AI and stuff. But um, you know, one of the things I think will be the coolest uh, with Star Citizen is the fact that we're really having a lot of opportunities for co-op play, especially sort of small team co-op play. So, you know, like you and three friends flying a constellation, or maybe you and some friends with a mining operation, or, you know, like a fueling operation where you're going out and you know, harvesting uh, gas for your star, you know, and refining it into your star fare to sell off, like, you know, um, thruster boost um, uh, fuel and stuff like that. So I just think there'll be a lot of opportunity for people to do different things and work together uh, in a way that, um, you know, that isn't all just always about combat, although you can also do that in combat. And that'll be pretty cool. And that's one of the biggest things I'm looking forward to seeing is just really like how many different things or roles that people, you know, who, who wants to be traders, who wants to be, you know, doing search and rescue, who wants to be explorers, who wants to, you know, be a mercenary and a bounty hunter, a pirate. and all these things, and uh, that's that's kind of I think what will be the strength of Star Citizen. You can do it by yourself, or you can do it with some of your, you know, a small group of friends, or you can do it as much part of a larger organization, and uh, that'll be cool. Um, okay, last question comes from uh, Damon Ikas, I would say, uh, Demonicas or Damon, or Damon Ikas would be the two ways to pronounce it. I don't know which is the correct one, but hey, uh, will there be gambling in the persistent universe such as high stakes poker? Well, I would say that um, you know, we definitely want to have some level of, again, talking about sort of immersion in the universe, that definitely be sort of the, you know, whatever, the Las Vegas equivalent in, in UEE space. And we probably at some point will do some mini game stuff, which could include poker, where you could gamble against other people with the money you earn UEE, and probably some other stuff as well. Um, so that would be sort of a longer term goal. I'm not necessarily sure that it's going to be in 1.0. Uh, just because we've got so much stuff to do that you know you got to prioritize it, but that is on the that's sort of on the agenda in the list, and uh, you know ultimately, yeah, we want this universe to be you know a living, breathing universe where you fly around and go down to planets, and you're down on planets. If it's a CD planet, you walk on, you can get mugged by you know a NPC mugger, or you know there's a CD gambling den, or you know you it feels alive and you know but both planets feel alive or space stations feel alive or space itself feels alive so uh, you know having um, different things you can do like playing poker against other players would be things that would add to to that feeling all right that are the 10 questions uh, so i'd like to thank uh, obviously all the subscribers for um, contributing money, allowing us to do this kind of shows. I'd like to thank everyone out there that has backed uh, the game. We're now over $54 million, which is absolutely incredibly amazing. Uh, and you know, the, the money that continues to come in, you know, just helps scope the game. So, you know, we're quite different than, um, a typical publisher because at some point they're like, oh, we're in profit. Well, the way we're looking at it is the money that we bring in before the game is finished is basically defining just quite how uh, big and f ambitious and you know what level of detail that this whole universe is going to have in. Um, and uh, it's great because you know uh, the the level of support and excitement from you guys is fantastic. The team is uh, really excited, so we're excited to be showing you some uh, stuff. As we go on later on this year, we're going to be showing some stuff at uh, CitizenCon and we'll be showing some stuff later on at PAX Australia um, that will open up other areas of the game in terms of giving you glimpses into it. And, uh, you know, next year is going to be a lot more stuff. And uh, you know, I'm so glad that you guys are on the ride with, uh, with, with me and the team here and uh, looking forward to um, 
continuing the journey and keeping on iterating and giving you more and more parts of Star Citizen and, and seeing what you guys think and making it the best damn space sim ever. So I'll talk to you next week. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching um, Ten for the Chairman. Uh, if you guys would like to uh, see more episodes, go here. If you guys would like to subscribe to our YouTube channel and always keep up to date with all our video content, go here. And uh, if you guys would like to watch episodes of Around the Verse, go here, please. And I will see you in the verse. <laughs>